On this episode of A Day in the Life of an HVAC Technician, Fox Family Heating and Air Conditioning grinds on through the end of the winter season of 2018, a season that has been steadily busy bringing lots of new customers to the company. Yep, we got a hand on it. Today, Aaron replaces a control board on an Intertherm mobile home HVAC system. We went to the uh, manufacturer, we got a OEM uh, manufactured control board. Greg and Justin discuss some options for a compressor replacement or a condenser and coil replacement. Greg builds a return air can with a 16-inch collar to attach to the end of a new furnace going in. And Keith discusses a gas sediment trap technicality we faced recently with the code inspectors. Years, they're like, no, we want it this way. All right, so we're gonna head on over to Shingle Springs. It's actually not Shingle Springs, it's uh, Shingle Springs Road. South, no, South Shingle Road. But we're not actually in Shingle Springs. Uh, we're over in the Latrobe area. Anyways, uh, today we're going to be heading out to uh, replace a control board. Uh, Keith was out here on Saturday and the, the control board failed. So Aaron and I are actually going out to do the to make the repair on the system. We went to the uh, manufacturer. We got a OEM uh, manufactured control board uh, that we're going to replace it with. And the gentleman is a club member with us already, so he'll get 15% off. Uh, you'll get, get that discount off the uh, parts. And we have a lifetime warranty on all the parts that we replace, except for compressors and coils. We don't, and heat exchangers. We don't have lifetime warranties on them. But, uh, but any, you know, capacitors, contactors, pressure switches, control boards, all that kind of stuff, we, we, we do put a lifetime warranty on those. So. But yeah, so we're gonna be heading out to there. So uh, we'll see what we run into. Yeah, we got the culprit right here. Mm -hmm. Makes it a lot oh, easier yeah. <laughs> when it's obvious like that. Right. Oh, look at that. Oh, chewed up. Yep. Bad board. Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, so go ahead and turn thing. your power off. It's coming in, but not out. In from here, but not out. Right. Yeah. As long as you're touching it, it's all good to me. find I always find you know one of the first lessons I got on a control board was um, before I touch this to ground myself, myself. yeah because yeah. I, I guess I could send a spark into that or something yeah, like that sure. so, yeah. yeah that's why they give us a nice little warning about sensitive to static electricity yeah nice Common and 24 volts. I only take maximum two off at a time. Yeah, I know. I'm like the same way. I'm wire for wire. <laughs> is it, is it, I try to do it as much as I can remember it.
Hold on a second. It's not just boy. Because I did that it out. So we'll flip the switch and kick it on. That's more than we got last time. That's your inducer motor kicking on. Mm -hmm. Which activates the pressure switch. Which tells the board we're safe. Then we should get, yep. Kicks on. Lower wheel, it's like it's balanced, and it's all right. He got a control board for a young man. He was very happy to get his furnace up and running again. Uh, and we checked out his air conditioner too. He had just bought the property with a beautiful view and wanted to see about his air conditioner and make sure that was working as well. So I think we got it. Yeah. Here's the view. This guy has an amazing view. He says at nighttime you can see city lights all across the horizon, all the way to downtown is around. You can see downtown on the other side of the house. Crazy. Star or something? I still was going to quote him for a train, but I was going to try and give him like maybe both the prices, you know? Well, I don't know. Because um, he looked at us, he looked us up on the internet, I guess, and he saw that we were a train dealer, so I think he liked that. But. Well, I feel like we have some really good train pricing. Um, uh, I feel like we have the best train pricing in town, actually. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I told you him. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, what kind of prices are you trying to get down to? Well, no, I was just wondering, I was asking Melissa, like, 
like if it's AC and coil, do we still have to give the sound blanket the start assist and the flood switch? Because if we don't, does that mean whatever it says? Oh, I see. You're gonna try and sell them a, an AC and a coil. Um, I was wondering, yeah. is it a 410 system or is it a yeah. R22? It's a 410. Oh, it is a 410 system. Yeah. So if it's a 410 system, then we could just sell them a condenser only, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I told him. He was like, you know, we, <clears throat> I said, you just want to press for the condenser, right? And he's like, well, don't you think we should switch the coil to? He's like, because that's 14 years old. I don't want it to start leaking. Oh, okay. So uh, I was like, I mean, if you want to, you know, I was like, you know, they, you know, and then I just had the conversation with them, you know, if it's not leaking, it's not leaking, you know, but. So my, you know, uh, my. Usually with each, they do, you know. The Ameristar AC and coil only is uh do what tonnage is it three ten it's a three ten or a fourteen hundred square foot house okay and so it's, we're um, it's being we're smart that stuff I, <clears> okay I, yeah if you want to give me 10 minutes i can get a price go i can get a price going real quick okay for sure and then um what was i going to say so the Maristar, we don't we don't do the sound blanket it's not assist that you switch uh yeah we actually do uh, Okay, so so I'll just leave that checked on the S. Regardless, we still do that. Yeah, the AC and coil. Yeah, we still we still do the condensate safety switch and the uh, uh, compressor sound blanket right. and uh, and the the smokes and the permit. Yeah. Okay, and then so I called Sigma and I told them to switch it over to the compressor too. Yes. And so. Um, I know on the pricing thing, like it says, uh, labor only, which is like thirteen seventy five. Yeah. And then the compressor itself costs. Okay, and then add that to your um, to your labor. So thirteen seventy five. Yeah, and then if you were to um, if if they were to sign up on the club membership, we would give them the discount. Like we would discount the reduced labor cost, but still that same price on the compressor because I can't really come down on that. So, Plus that comes with the first six pounds of R410A refrigerant. Yeah, um, for sure. And uh, and then anything over that they have to pay for. Yeah, I think it holds eight and a half, I think. Okay. So, I mean, if it's eight and a half, it's going to probably end up being nine and a half. So then, okay. you know, charge them another three pounds of refrigerant, you know. Yeah, so let me get you a price then. Uh, let me Give me 10 minutes and I'll get you a price, okay? All right, no problem. Just shoot me a text. Okay, will do. Thank you, Greg. Got it. All right. <clears throat> Hello. Hey, buddy. Hey, Greg. Okay, so Ameristar is going to be... Okay. And then um, Train would be... So, okay. um, but that's what we can do, and uh, that would for the train. That's a train coil and a train condensing unit. Yeah. It's the 14 sear, so it doesn't have the weather guard on it. Yeah, um, for sure. But uh, but but it's a, a great system. So. Yeah, for sure. And then the Ameristar is the same thing, right? Is a Ameristar condenser, and and an AD, ADP coil. ADP, okay. Which okay. and all of them are aluminum coils, so. Yeah, for sure. That's what I was kind of explaining to him outside. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, thanks, buddy. I okay, appreciate thank it. You, Greg. I appreciate yeah, it. good luck. All right, bye. Bye. Saw you, Warley. Oh, that's tight. That is so tight. I know, it sucks. Um, yep, yeah, wiggle top end to the left. Yep. Yeah. Now, top where you're at. Push it to the or your right. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There now you go. down. Now, now straight. I got a hand on it. Door switch, maybe. Door switch. Just break. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yep, we got a hand on it. You got it? 
Yep. Oh. <laughs> nice job, Keith. You the man, Warley. Okay, so uh, at the end of this furnace, we have a uh, opening here. So we're gonna put this return air can on there with this collar, and then we're gonna hook the ductwork up to it. So this return air can is three or four inches deep, and when once it's on there, then that's gonna give it enough uh, room to, for the duct to come in and then spread itself out enough so that the air can get into the blower efficiently. So that's the goal there. So the first thing we gotta do is uh, this won't just right up on there. So we're actually going to make this, we're going to make these edges flat and then we'll bend those out so that uh, you can screw it on. So right now we got to bend these tabs down. So see now we've now we've got our edges flat here. So when we decide when we do put it up here, now we'll be able to just screw it straight in. We're basically just gonna go around the inside here, make a circle, and then that's where we're gonna cut. made our circle and that's where we're going to cut and then here you want to just cut around the outside about a quarter of an inch around the outside. Here starting hole going we're actually going to lay this flathead screwdriver down and then bang on it that's going to cut that's going to cut that metal for us. So. See that gets the metal started for us and now we can use our reds and cut out. There's our hole, so that's done. Now we're gonna put our collar in there. So now that we've got the collar on, we're going to go three places around the corners here. We're going to try and get three screws <clears throat> so that this thing doesn't cave in once we put panduits on it. So. Two. 
So we got one here, one here, and one there now. So once you put the when you put the panduit on for the duct work, then this thing doesn't crush inwards. All right, and then we want to make this thing airtight, so we put mud around the corners of it, <clears throat> and so make that all tight. And now we can put the can on. Now we got the can screwed on there. We're gonna tape it up. So now we've got our return air can on. And the guys will just add, they'll just take that duct work and they'll run it around, make a nice loop into here. So. Interesting. Good thing I took a look at that. Yeah, I better just bypass that, huh? Yeah. Oh, that's the uh, AC wire. This is huh? the, yeah. So, well, I'm going to put it in here and then wire net another piece. Got just it. to make it look nice, you know? Yeah. It's not just hanging out. Got this gas sediment trap up there and going. We recently got dinged on that. Keith, you want to explain what he was, what, what we got dinged on? <laughs> So we were putting the shut off here, then running the straight piece, and then the sediment trap, <clears throat> and then having the top come off here. Because sediment is obviously not, I mean, sediment, if it throws straight into the T, yeah. um, you know, it's not like it's magically going to go up into the piping, but this code inspector called yeah. us on it. So he said, essentially, we have to, it has to be dumping straight down into the trap and then the gas only uh, flex coming off the side so he didn't want the flex coming off the top and then the shut off being here 
He wanted the flex coming off the side. It's a fun game we play, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to stay ahead of the code inspectors. Yeah, it beats me. Which, it's funny because they told us to do it that, the other way. And then after two years, they're like, no, we want it this way now. So now the sediment <laughs> trap is before the gas flex. Yes. But even even when it was, even, like, it, you know, a few installs we did recently. Yeah, we were doing it. Yeah, they said it was fine to do it that way, as long as the sediment trap's before the flex. The flex. Right. So now they've, now they've put even more constraints on it. But, yeah. All right. Well, that's how we're doing it, though, so. Yeah. That way we don't have to come back. <laughs> it's right? all just a game. we got to play it. Shingle Springs Road, South, no, South Shingle Road, but we're not actually in Shingle Springs.